Hi, I'm uh, going to show you Lightroom processing for a full moon. Full moon being flatly lit. This one is not quite a perfect full moon. You can see on the edge here that the Terminator is very slightly in. Perhaps a day before full, that sort of thing. And um, when you shoot these correctly, you're exposing basically the uh, sunny, what is it called? The Looney 11 rule. F11 at... Um, 1 over ISO. So ISO 100 is 1 100th of a second F11. This is a perfect Looney 11 exposure, exactly the way you want to expose the moon. Uh, this is a 3 to 1 expansion because you'd want to look at the edge of the moon before you do anything else. And you can see here I've got slight CEA of the green variety there. Um, yep, so uh, we just in Lightroom, the first thing we'll probably do here is we'll turn on removal of chromatic aberration and you can see it vanishes. Looks lovely now. So, good. Now we'll go back to one to one. So that's a one to one crop. Let's go in and actually crop this. I like the one to one look. Bring this way down to a fairly small moon and then drag the moon in. Almost perfect. Oop, kind of messed that up last second. Mouse with good precision helps. I don't think I have one here, but there we go. So that's more or less a one-to-one -one crop, and you can tell by going fit. There you go. So it's a one-to-one -one crop. Close enough. All right. So all we have to do is run down the panel on the right side here for Lightroom. There's very little difficulty in getting this right. I would generally take, and you can see that the it's... Uh, it was judged as 3950, which is not actually sunlight. Even though that's a sunlit moon, the color temperature is not 5500. It's not like through our atmosphere during the day sort of thing. It doesn't look the same. But <clears throat> I would click there to make it even colder. 3700 is where it comes. This is a good spot on the moon to click because that is more or less a neutral area. Now what I want to do is I want to drag... Um, I want to drag out details like this area of blast crater here. That crater and its blast area, I want that to show as pure white. All these white dots should be very pure. These can darken up a bit. In fact, there's color in there, which you'll see in a moment. I'm going to process this in color, and I might do a quick black and white after. We'll see if I have time. First, I'm going to bring the exposure up a little. That's way too much, so let's drag that back. And I'm going to take the contrast down. That's counterintuitive, because if you put the contrast up because you want a more contrasty image, you're really just going contrast from white to black, and you're losing the inner contrast, which is much more subtle. So take this backwards a bit, and you get a much nicer level of detail. That's just the beginning, though. So we back off the highlights a little bit, not too much, and then pull these up a little more, bring them about maybe there, about three quarters. Now you're starting to see some real contrast in the whites. That's very useful. If you tried opening up the shadows, you're not really going to get anywhere. So in fact, what you want to do is try to get this to show 0, 0, 0 across here. And then I'm showing 0, 0, 0, but that's a little bit dramatic. So let's pull back. You can see the Terminator comes and goes a bit as I eat into it by having the black level set too low. So right there is about where I have the Terminator. And do I have black? It's not quite. 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. That's pretty good, but I'll take it down a little further because I don't really lose too much of the Terminator there. And now I have zeros across the board, so it looks good. Actually, I can go up just a little bit to restore the Terminator because I can do some of that final reduction with a curve. Okay, shadows, raising or lowering shadows doesn't do much for you here. So I would probably take it down a little bit and just leave it there. That will be fine. Now you add a bit of clarity. Careful with this, you can do some ugly things with it, but adding a bit will give a bit of local contrast and it does help with some of these edges and everything. Um, you can deal with vibrance by either backing it off and go almost black and white, well that would be black and white, or cranking it up and getting some color in the moon. You can see the moon's pretty colorful, some yellows along here, blues in there. Um, I wouldn't tend to go as colorful as that. I'd tend to leave it there, maybe there. 
So you can see some color, and that's great. I mean, the moon looks interesting in color. Now here I've got to the curve, and I'm going to just lift the midtones a bit, bring this up a little, and then take this down a little. And we're just adding more contrast into the moon itself. Now I'm going to go and slide this way over so that I can just pinch the bottom a little bit. And you can see how deep the black is. Very beautiful. Gives a very nice edge without really increasing um, the glow around the moon. You want to take the glow away so that the moon is just sitting there hanging in space, which is exactly what it looks like when you look through a binocular. Um, okay, so that's pretty good. We're getting there now. I would probably raise that a bit more and take the curve down a little there. Now that's getting a little closer to what I like. The colorful moon is maybe a little overdone. I'm kind of looking there and not really loving what I'm seeing. Take that vibrance down a bit. Let's calm it down, in, in other words. A little bit of color is nice. A lot's not so good, nice. Just verify that we're still holding on to our color temperature. Yeah, that's a bit better. I'd, um, if you crank up the vibrance, you will tend to drift the colors. They'll accentuate a bit more, so then you come back and neutralize it again. And now you have color where you want it, but not in, in there. I want this to be pretty neutral. It just looks better, in my opinion. And finally, I mean, you, you can go here, by the way, and, and drag these this slider up and down locally to accentuate colors in certain spots. Now, hang on, let's try to get that to behave again. There we go. So I can pull a lot, a lot of blue out of there if I want. I don't really want, but you can see what you can do if you want. And here, going here and then clicking on it and holding to a little drift with you. And there you can see it's a bit redder. So I can crank red and orange full blast. And I'm not in love with it, but, you know, maybe a little bit more just localized to these areas. Looks all right. This is a personal taste issue because you can always just hit black and white here. And there you go. That looks great too. The moon looks good in color and in black and white in my opinion. Now sharpening is key on the moon. You really want to avoid, like you want sharp edges, but you want to avoid noise in the seas. It just doesn't look nice. So I always take detail all the way down because I just don't need it. You crank it up, but you get a lot of noise. It gives you good edge isolation, but it also isolates the edges of all the bits of noise. So I mask it so that I get, if I hold the um, Alt key down, I believe, you will see that, and maybe not. Oh, well, that would help if I held the Alt key down. There we go. So the masking will show you edges. The key is you want to mask off areas of where you don't want noise, like the seas. You don't want any noise there. And that's what I was showing there. It's all the seas are protected now, and all the edges are not. So that lets us hit. I like to reduce radius just a little bit and go for finer edges. Start cranking this up in around 100. Noise reduction I could use except at, at 100 uh, ISO I don't need noise reduction. So now we can see the pretty fine edges around, for example, the Apennine Mountains along here, very finely edged. And that's starting to look pretty good. The craters are becoming quite distinct. Um, I mean, you can crank the radius up a bit if you want to make it a little more accentuated. It shouldn't hurt because it is so smooth. So there you have a bit more detail along the crater edge here. The only reason you can see craters is because there's still a little bit of a terminator here. So you get just a bit more angle on the sun right there. Starting to really shape up here. Um, that's about it. I'm running Adobe Standard. There are other options with Nikon. I could have started with Camera Neutral. That's where I often start. But this is one of those um, topics, not topics, one of those subjects that hasn't got a lot of inherent contrast. You can see contrast now, of course, but it's not a dramatic amount. Now, if I wanted to go back, now that I'm here, and tweak this just a little bit more, I could click on that so that I can drag up and down for contrast now. So here, let's say I want to take that just a little darker. It brings all of the light colors with it. And let's say I want to make this just a little bit brighter. And maybe the intermediate's a bit brighter. So that looks more like the moon through a binocular. 
maybe a little bit dramatic as far as the look of the seas. They're maybe darker and more colorful than you would see, but that's not a bad look. I kind of like it. So let's call that done, and you can see it's pretty a dramatic curve here, big S curve. Um, we're good on the top here. We have not even blown out one area. On the other hand, the dark was always blown out, as you can see when I run over that. So there's nothing blown out on the whites, but the blacks are, of course, blocked completely. And that doesn't matter because it did, we didn't lose the Terminator. We have a beautiful edge on the moon. So that would be that. Um, now for Lightroom, of course, exporting it. I have custom setups where I do a low sharpening, 1,000 by 1,000 with a watermark. So let's do that. And it takes a moment. And we should have it here, I guess. So as I said, this is what it looked like when I first did it with Photoshop. That's just dang awful. Then I did a version that I thought was pretty good, except looking back at it, it's grossly over sharpened. So I've mangled these areas and these look flattened too much. So that's, well, pretty awful too. This is the one I just did in Lightroom. 1000 by 1000 means this is bigger than the pixels allowed, meaning I've magnified it digitally on top of the original magnification from the lens. So it doesn't look as good in this mode because I've actually got thicker edges than I should have since they've all been enhanced. But bring it back to what would be a more normal sized look. You know, if you had it in a web page or a blog, you'd probably have it like that. And it looks pretty darn good. That's pretty close to one to one, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, I don't know, that's a pretty good looking moon, I think. So anyway, that's how I do it in Lightroom. Um, enjoy. Uh, don't be afraid to play with all these panels. You can have a great time uh, pulling out contrast and, and uh, making the edges sharper, that sort of thing. Y it, it uses a PK Sharpener built in from Pixel Genius. So Lightroom, uh, the partnership with them has really enhanced the sharpening and it makes it much easier to do a really good job. Uh, quite a bit more powerful, I think, than Photoshop, for example. Anyway, have a good time.